Umbridge Captain Dave Rivera. I've been employed with the district since 1994, going on my 26th year here at the bridge. I started off in the lanes as a temporary worker. On a whim, I went and applied for a temporary bridge officer position and then worked my way up to get hiring full-time, promoted up to sergeant, lieutenant, and eventually a captain. Um, Luis Bautista, bridge patrol officer for the Golden Gate Bridge Hiring Transportation District. I've always been fascinated with this place and this bridge specifically. And when I found out that there was an opening, I had to apply and by far it was the best decision I've ever made. My name is Jared Tagalubu. I've been here for approximately two and a half years. After seeing the, the area you work and the duties you have, I was kind of drawn to it. We're the security department. A lot of people refer to us as bridge patrol. So the responsibilities that come with my job are making sure that, first of all, our staff is well-trained, um, that we're doing the best we can to go out there and intervene um, with any type of incident we have, whether it's suicide intervention or accidents, and making sure that we're responding from a security uh, aspect. In addition, we're responsible for maintaining the bridge and making sure that traffic is flowing as part of our duties and just responding to the thousands of tourists and visitors that we have here on a daily basis. If we're not on the sidewalk doing suicide intervention or you know handling public safety stuff, we're on the road in a patrol vehicle, patrolling our parking lots because we have an extensive amount of vehicle burglaries that occur on both the south end and the north end of the bridge. We do use a lot of cameras to help us assist in that, but there's nothing like a physical presence. We're generally there for public safety function, but really we're there to specifically look for people who are in danger of hurting themselves. When we hire people, we put them through crisis intervention training. We talk about the signs you can look for and how you can help people who are in need. Some of the things officers will look for is if they come out, they'll look at a person. A person may have their hands in their pockets and they're looking down, and they're kind of moping across the bridge. Or they're looking at a stanchion and they're looking out, of the, out at the water for an extended time. Or they're coming out here and their clothes may not seem right. And officers will go out and they'll say, hey, how you doing? And they may not get a response because you get this thousand yard stare. So there's a lot of different things that sometimes you can pick up on. It may take a quick 10 second look at to see something's not right. We find a lot of people in their parking lots when we're suicidal. We'll look for, for cars that have been sitting here for a while. We'll look for somebody that's been sitting in their car for an extended amount of time. We'll look for notes. I was aware that there was going to be some suicide intervention um, incorporated into the job itself. I didn't know how much that would occur. We've literally seen people jump right in front of us. I've been on scene when an officer approached a subject that was suicidal. We identified that person, we went to make contact with them, and they ran and jumped over the rail. It does take a special person because to have the mental fortitude to go out there and do this day in and day out for a number of years, yeah, you have to be mentally strong to be able to deal with that. Specifically, remember one, it was a 13-year-old girl. She had climbed over the rail and she was threatening to jump. And it was right at about 6.15 in the morning. We had just started our shift. She was sitting on the ledge, her feet were dangling, and she, she was crying upset. I began to talk to her and I talked to her for maybe 15, 20 minutes. I told her, I said, hey, I have four daughters, you know, and you know, this concerns me and, and I understand what you're going through. And, talked to her a little bit more and um, I asked her if she was hungry. She said, yeah. I said, well, come back over that rail and let's go get something to eat. And it, it, that's what worked. I think the net's gonna be good as a deterrent. I think that any kind of device that would help us do our job by deterring people from coming out to the Golden Gate Bridge in the first place, it can only be good. The district has taken positive steps to, let's like, say, your lives are important, so let's put up a deterrent system. I work with a bunch of great people. And when I say the team, not just the security department, but all the iron workers and the electricians and the painters and our bridge service people, because it takes a village to succeed, and it's all a team effort.